I want to have an incarnational experience on Mother Earth. So what you do is you go and you, first of all, you've got to enter the galaxy. So you enter through the core and the heart. So you know the being that is that galaxy. And you merge and you become one with that being on a galactic con heart consciousness level. So in the core of the galaxy, the heart of the galaxy, you have a part of you that's there. And now to go to a star system, which is dropping down, it's stepping down the level of consciousness, you project an aspect of yourself from the core of the galaxy and you flow, like in this galaxy, you f we flow down the spiral arms of the galaxy, a river of, of, of life energy. And we then found, we, by law of attraction, we gravitated, okay, to our sun. And so we then, and because we need to acclimatize ourselves because each galaxy has its own vibrational patterns. So because, you know, you, you've chosen to come here because you wanted these set of experiences. So each galaxy you choose to incarnate in, you go there because of its vibrational patterns and therefore it'll be the set of experiences you, you want it to have. And, and, and it'll um, then supply you with the right amount of charge in your soul that you require. And that's why we do these things. And so you, we acclimatize ourselves with the vibrational pattern of the Milky Way galaxy. And then we project a part of ourselves, like I said, from the core of the galaxy, and we flow down these spiral arms, these rivers of life energy, and we ended up finding the star. We were just attracted to it straight, straight away. It happens very quick. And then we um, entered and merged and became one with the solar system, with the heart of the sun. That is the body, that is the being, that is the solar system, because each star system has its own unique vibration. So your essence now needs to calibrate itself with the vibrational patterns of that solar system. And then you've got a part of yourself that's in the heart of the sun. And then from there you project an aspect of self to the core and the heart of the consciousness that is the planetary body you wish to incarnate onto. And so there's a part of you that's still in the sun and now you've got an aspect of you that's now merged and become one with the Earth Mother because you need to now calibrate your essence to the vibrational patterns and, and acclimatize yourself to the reality of that planet. And then from the core of the planet, you then project a part of yourself out to the incarnational, the, the core of the incarnational embodiment that you wish to um, occupy. And that's how we've, flo we've flowed. That's how we've come to be here. And, uh, and so for a, a group of beings that want to control uh, a life form, the first thing they need to do, and this is looking at it from the point of view of being a... Um, you know, a dark lord controlling of, of, of an empire who was to uh, impose itself on a planetary system and take control, you can't just go in there with soldiers and think you're going to do it by force. It might last for a little while, but after a while it's not going to work. Eventually they'll find a way. So um, if you really want to control a, a, a reality, you, a, a life form, you've got to control the reality they exist inside of. So for this planet, in order to control humanity, you control the feminine. And that just explains everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Control the feminine, control humanity. You suppress the feminine here, you are suppressing humanity. I mean, how obvious. And you just look back through history and have a look at what's happened to the divine feminine energy and the woman and what she's had to go through, and that just explains absolutely everything. And you look at how the women of Islam wear the veil, how nuns cover themselves up, it's, a, it's symbolic of the woman is behind the curtain. And guess what? She's now stepping out from behind the curtain. And people like myself and people like now that I understand what John Lash is doing um, and many, many other people are saying, hey, this is the woman now is reclaiming her sovereignty. This is her body. And so, you know, for them to control us, they want to cut us off from our connection with the um, earth and cut us off from our connection with the sun. You know, and in ancient times, they did not worship the sun. Sure, there was some priesthoods which created religions around the concept, but beings like Akhenaten did not create a monotheistic religion. That's a load of crap. He came here, uh, and much, much earlier than what you're being told, he was here like 24,000 years ago in the beginning and set things up for this cycle, and it was the explanation of, and I know that just sounded crazy, but it is the truth, um, because all, oh, geez, big stories here. I mean, even the equipment we use to date things is fixed. To, to tell the story that people want you to believe. Like, come on, you know, I used to be a computer program, uh, not a programmer, a hardware engineer, and um, I used to work with computer programmers, and uh, I tell you every election in every democratic society is fixed. You know, the computers will put out whatever people want it to put out. I mean, yeah. you don't have to be a, a professor to work that out. And so, um, 
Yeah, so the, what Akhenaten was saying was this is the construct. It is the life force coming from the sun. This is, you know, he was just explaining things. He did not create a religion, but he did dismantle the priesthoods that were controlling people, you know. So this campaign against the sun is paramount for these beings that want to control us. And over the, throughout the ages, they've hijacked the identity of the sun and because um, false uh, gods, demigods have come here and, uh, and created religions so they can be worshipped um, by hijacking the identity of the sun. And the latest one we have with the identity of uh, Isus or Emmanuel or Yeshua, whatever you want to call him, uh, the one we know as Jesus, well, the personality and the character that's been sold to the masses now is just ridiculous because he was the walking incarnation of the sun and uh, he certainly was not into worship and he certainly was not into flesh and blood rituals like you have in the churches and um, and that's not the work of the Christ that I know, that's for sure. So, you know, and it's the same being, whether it's Buddha or Krishna or, or, or Christ, you know, it's all the Christ consciousness. It's all the same consciousness. Buddha was a walking incarnation of the sun. The real Krishna was a walking incarnation of the sun. Uh, the real original Ra was a walking incarnation of the sun, the Horus. And so you, there's these beings, their identities have been stolen throughout the ages and religions have been created from them. And uh, it's all about worship and empowerment and control. So right now a lot of people are afraid of solar flares and that the sun's going to wipe out our atmosphere, our electricity, all that. Is that all false? Uh, no, it's not uh, false. Those days will come. It'll get to a point where things will be a little bit difficult. But what I want to say is that the way the, the planetary consciousness and the, and the solar consciousness and all the other beings that are involved in managing this um, reality here, uh, the, the plan is really um, quite thoughtful because they've left it to the very last moment. So it's going to be very intense over a very short period of time. And I don't know about you, but I can feel the, the pressure cooker building pressure. You know, like things are, things are steaming up. The pressure is building, the pressure is building. It's kind of like a cam effect. And as you get closer to the peak of the cam, the resistance is the greatest. And then it just gives. And that's pretty much what's happening here. One day the pressure cooker at the top is going to blow and things are just going to spill into the public arena, which are very soon. I'd be surprised if... if if it doesn't happen before the end of the year, I'll be quite shocked, actually. Um, I'd expect something to, to occur between now and the end of the year. And it's interesting because I just cannot get anything to work towards the end of the year. I can't make anything happen. I, can't <laughs> create, I cannot create any events. I can't organise or plan anything. Um, and my higher self and my connection with the, the planet and my connection with all the beings that I have and, and ET races that I'm in contact with, Everybody's preparing. I mean, even the natural kingdom. If you, if you, um, for those people who have that ability to speak with the natural kingdom, you speak to all the spiritual hierarchies with um, the kingdom of the trees and the animals and the aquatic races and the insect races. And my goodness, they're all their spiritual hierarchies, and everybody's preparing every, because you know the natural environment is working out who's going to go through and who's not. So it's not just about the human race as well. It's also about the natural environment that is. Uh, also metamorphosizing and um, that's another aspect people are leaving out of the equation you can't you can't have a, a planetary race of enlightened beings walking around an environment that's completely barbaric you know everything kills everything in order to survive so that's a contradiction so people don't take into consideration that the natural environment has served its purpose and provided the environment that we needed for this plunge into these really dark depths of, of barbarianism, of consumerism, and this, this incredible journey that the human soul, the collective human soul has, has embarked on and is now coming out of. Wow, thank you. You're, you're very welcome. Thanks, Green Meadow. And um, in regards to the rise of the female energy, if um, this roundtable is any indication, it should be good. <laughs> Continuing on, <laughs> George Yule got an email from an Australian contractor stating the Australian government was secretly preparing for a once in a 10,000 year flood. There have been rumours about facilities in Pine Gap and under the Snowy Mountains in the east. Interestingly, Aboriginal elders have a belief that Uralu, which is in the centre of Australia, will be surrounded by water and that central Australia will become a major food producing area for the planet. You did mention previously that one-third of the people will ascend, half are taken, and the remaining quarter or so will be left behind. 
What information have you been given about earth changes affecting Australia and potential survival areas for those left behind? Yeah, well, my understanding is um, there won't be... Uh, if there's survival areas, I'll be very short term because um, I'm staying with Mother Earth, but when she... When I talk about, you know, people say, well, you know, you're talking about staying with Mother Earth, but then you're talking about the crust imploding um, into, into centre. Um, well, it's like this. There's openings are going to appear all around the planet, and these will be openings in our reality which allow us to walk through into a higher frequency. And therefore, we will be um, immune. We'll be in a safe zone um, and we won't be feeling the effects of Mother Earth uh, cleansing herself of the lower ego. So the, to, I don't feel in my heart, in my beingness, in my bones, that the planet is going to continue the way it is. It, for this environment, this ecosystem to continue the way it is, it's going to, um, it, it's still death and destruction constantly. It's still barbarianism, it's still consume consumerism um there's still things eating other things in order to survive all the experiences that i've had um show me that tell me that we're going to be living off light we're not going to be because i've already experienced realities where beings just live off light i've already traveled there lots of times in my life even on this planet into the fifth dimension um which is known as avalon or shambhala or chula to the american indians or you know uh, it's got lots of different names um and it's not agatha that's something different that's a holographic extraterrestrial base inside the earth that's different so and i've been there too it's um i've had a weird life i really have so it really um i can't see that that that's going to be a part of our reality not this not the one i'm part of maybe it's someone else's reality but it's definitely not what I see Mother Earth doing, she's going to ascend and become a body of light. And uh, everybody out in the, there in the universe knows it, the planet knows it, the sun knows it, uh, the natural kingdom that I'm in communication with knows it. And um, every, every single... Um, you see, the, this is the challenge for the Indigenous races, and I've had a lot of meetings with a lot of elders of the Indigenous races, and I've still got a lot more to come. And uh, the... The, there's a lot of indigenous tribes and they're one with the natural kingdom, right? I mean, they're more connected than we ever have been really pretty much in this lifetime. And, uh, and just like we're addicted to our synthetic construct, they're addicted to their natural construct. But both are, are done with. They're finished. And, uh, and they're having problems with letting go. So it's um, a lot of the uh, spiritual people within these um, uh, n um, indigenous communities uh, haven't the capacity to see beyond the natural environment that they're connected with at the moment. So they don't realise that it's got to go as well. And it hurts them. It's, it's a real challenge because, you know, um, their connection we, they have um, with their natural environment is really deep. It's not like us with our synthetic environment. I mean, I mean, you take a computer away from a kid who's addicted to computer games and watch the, um, the craziness, um, you know, reveal itself in front of you. I mean, they can get violent. So... Uh, but when we're talking about a connection that's much deeper than that. So, um, yeah, they're having a lot. It's a big challenge for the Indigenous tribes. They're, they've been the caretakers for so long and they now have to let go of that natural environment. So they're struggling with it. I've, this is what I'm working with behind the scenes with the Indigenous elders.